And now we have Kaylee Hartung joining us for this week's Unplugged Under 40. Kaylee, what do you have for us? Thanks, John. Um, this week, we're going to take a look at Jared Cohen. He's the guy at the State Department who's figuring out how to use Facebook, Twitter, and other social media outlets to achieve American diplomatic initiatives. Most 20-somethings post photos on Facebook from a BlackBerry and share their favorite YouTube clip of the day on Twitter. But Jared Cohen uses social media and technology to empower people around the world. Every time you hold your cell phone, you know, know that there's people around the world that without this tool wouldn't have the civil liberties that you and I take for granted every day. When Iranians used Twitter to coordinate demonstrations earlier this summer, Jared became directly involved. He was the State Department official who called up the founder of Twitter and kept Iranians connected in the chaos. And in the midst of what was happening in Iran, obviously Twitter played a, a critical role. You know, we don't tell the private sector what to do, but what we can do is provide situational awareness. And after providing that situational awareness, Twitter agreed to delay their scheduled maintenance. So what qualifies this 27-year-old to advise the Secretary of State on new technology and youth issues? Jared graduated from Stanford in 2004, won a Rhodes Scholarship and was off to Oxford. I was much more interested in traveling than, than I was sitting in class. So in between classes, he traveled across the Middle East and wrote his second book. I, you know, I documented all my travels in, uh, in, this, in, in Children of Jihad, and it's, um, it's really a, it's, it's a perspective. You know, it, it documents my uh, conversations and experiences as a Jewish kid from Connecticut uh, you know, running around the Middle East talking to young people, seeing where there was commonalities. So I like and when he returned to the States after grad school, he sought advice from his mentor, none other than Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. You know, she kept asking me, what do you want to do after Oxford? What do you want to do after Oxford? And then one day I was sitting in her office. I said, you know what? I want to be on your policy planning staff. And so she looked at me and said, sounds like a perfect marriage. And uh, I came to the State Department and I've been here ever since. And you were how old at the time? Uh, I was 24 at the time and now I'm 27. <laughs> it was a little, it was a little bold. It's Jared is the youngest member of Clinton's policy planning staff and one of only three holdovers from the previous administration. He says the 20-member team is the secretary's personal think tank. And our job is to wake up in the morning and look at the secretary's priorities and come up with ideas, long-term, short-term. Some ideas are better than others, but uh, we do what we can to, to make them come into fruition. In the three years Jared has been at the State Department, social media has really evolved. If you had told me in 2006 that technology would be a priority of the U.S. Department of State in terms of integrating it as a tool, I, I wouldn't have believed you. Jared says it's just a coincidence that as the 2008 presidential campaign showed Americans the power of the Internet to mobilize voters, young people around the world began to understand a new and powerful use for it, too. And what's interesting is that at the same time that this was happening here in the United States, it was beginning to happen abroad. You had young people in Colombia using social media to organize a 12 million person protest around the world to deal a devastating blow to the, the FARC uh, militant group in, in Colombia. You had uh, young people throughout the Middle East using social media uh, to mobilize in the name of human rights and good governance and democracy. And so these trends were happening just in, in, in almost a very ironic way at the same time. And with the help of a computer, anybody can be a leader. So technology is really leveling the playing field. So in Mumbai, the largest movement, uh, anti-terror movement following the attacks in Mumbai was organized by a 12-year-old um, using social media. And when I asked him, you know, why did you use technology, he said, because nobody would listen to a 12-year-old otherwise. You know, state Department officials call this 21st century statecraft, and Jared so now, leads the way. This week, he brought Silicon Valley's brightest to Mexico to explore how technology can be used to combat drug cartel violence. He's also convening the second annual Alliance of Youth Movements there, a summit on leadership and social media. He may be in Mexico today, but he says Afghanistan is where he's focusing a good deal of his energy. Well, actually, Afghanistan is one of the places, ironically, that, that we're, we're doing some of the most with regard to using technology for good governance and for civic empowerment. And I have just taken repeated trips to Afghanistan to uh, work on integrating mobile banking. Uh, to bring a financial capacity to Afghanistan's unbanked population. It's 97 percent unbanked. Mexico and Afghanistan, two of the 66 countries Jared has already visited. And that's what he loves about his job. The more a country is categorized as a developing nation, the more infrastructure challenges it has, the more censorship challenges it has, the more innovation it sparks on the part of the population. And so um, that's the innovation that I'm excited about. 
Facebook, Google, and Twitter, all technology developed here and used by Americans every day. But Jared says it's going to be a worldwide effort for social media to reach its full potential. Thanks, Kelly. That's wonderful. This week's Unplugged Under 40, which this week is Unplugged Under 30.